So I thought today we'd talk a little bit about fat shaming. Ugh. It's been a topic in the ex-body sex group, uh, the group of women that are getting certified or are certified have a group. And Lisa Kahn, who struggled with weight her whole life, her little daughter, seven, came in the car after school and made a comment about she doesn't want to be fat. And they were talking about fat. And so it initiated this conversation she had to have with her daughter about weight. How and old is the kid? Seven. Already. And she feels the pressure to be thin, to be attractive. <sighs> we just aren't going to allow people to have body types. You know, I got to <laughs> say, the best thing in the world for me was art school, drawing from models. Eventually, we preferred bodies that had heft. I say that because of erotic recess after we do group massage. What I found is the bodies that feel the best have the most flesh. They feel better. They feel better when you massage them. Otherwise, you're pushing in on bones. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's deeper than that. And it's because in the culture, our bodies are not our own. We focus on young girls and to get that message into them that your body exists for the male gaze or the pleasure. Like, I remember as a girl, didn't you feel the pressure from your family not to eat too much? Like, it starts no, in your teens. In I my family, it did. I didn't get it. No, because my mother was round, plump, and she loved food, and she just, she thought she looked like a million dollars. <laughs> Positive now, body image. She had it. She, she did. She liked her body. <coughs> um, I just blanked. Oh, that's okay. I'll start over. Well, Lisa made a comment, and she said that, you know, her whole life, she's armored with weight. And I think that's true of young girls. When we become sexual, because our bodies don't exist for ourselves, because we're not taught to masturbate, because we're not, we don't look at real vulvas, we have this disconnect, and we punish ourselves with food. Either we deprive ourselves, and we're anorexic. Either overeat or undereat. Either way, and we armor. Yeah. And she said she punished herself with food and movement. Because then you have to exercise, right? I'm going to work out. And you push yourself. And it's not none of it's oh, enjoyable. It's, it's insanity is what it is. It's insanity. Now, the, at one time, my body was perfect. And it was, it, it was in my early 40s. And do you know I couldn't bear it? I had to screw <laughs> up. I went through a period of getting too thin. And then I put weight. It's just. Well, your body's never the same. You know, we our hormones are on a cycle, and it's never the same. And, and my fattest periods were sometimes my happiest, and then my thinnest. And if we only approached it like that. Your body is your body. Is mm. If it's healthy and you can move. i got to say it again. My mother was a wonderful example. She thought she looked great. She'd get this little round belly and this little round behind, and she'd say, she'd hook, put, push her little girdle in a bit, and she'd say, I'm looking pretty good. That's pretty good. Affirmation. Yeah. She'd look in the mirror and say, you're looking good. So now I look in the mirror and I say, God damn, Dawson, you're getting old. <laughs> yeah, but what if we did it? What if we looked in the mirror and said, wow, you're almost 90 years old. You're doing And you great. live by yourself and you're still wa working. You're still in the game. <laughs> you can walk. You can go out to dinner. You can talk. You can hold workshops. You can do yeah. private sessions. You're still writing. What yeah. if we appreciated ourselves? And I think, you know, intent is important here. I do. I do that. I appreciate myself. When your intent is, I want to be thin to be appealing. I want to, you know, do everything in my life so that I'm yeah. appealing. Now, I feel like I want to be healthier more than ever because I want to be strong for my kid. Yeah, I want to be strong for uh, Dodson and Ross. <laughs> and when it changes, then all of a sudden, all that insecurity, all the neurotic behavior, all the bullshit just melts away. It goes away. It goes away. Self-love is going to start with how we like our bodies. It's a first step. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And it's a challenge as you get older. So I have to now just say all the things that my body is doing that I can eat, I can, I can have orgasms, I can walk the neighborhood, I can... You know, I'm I'm still alive. So, all right. So, yes, there's age, wrinkles, lines, sure. fat gut. <laughs> I can see it looking at our video clips 10 years ago. I looked better by some standards, but I think I'm happier now. I think when I look at my face, I have a happier face. Totally. 
And I'm here for me. This is my life. I'm not here to please anyone else. Well, when you get old and you have white hair, you're, in, <laughs> you're invisible. Nobody looks at you, you know. But then I get to look at everyone. I go, oh. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Doing the groups, I find that each woman is beautiful. There's always something. that The whole thing that we come up with, one ideal, that only you can hit for like a certain percentage of your life or a no. certain percentage of people, is just fucking ridiculous. No, 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 it doesn't work. It doesn't work. We've got to do a lot of shifting, but, you know, and then I came from the fashion industry, you know. Fuck fashion, fuck oh, it all, self-love. Oh, oh. <laughs> be healthy, be happy, be orgasmic, and love yourself. Okay, kids.